there's something captivating about the unknown. As humans, we tend to let our imaginations run wild when we can't quite understand something. This is why many of us are afraid of the dark or averse to change or hesitant to make big life decisions. But as we all know from experiencing these situations firsthand, the outcome's often good. Seeing stars, finding a new passion, being happy in a new home. I'd like to think that we're in this sort of transitory period from dread to appreciation with the world of microbes. The term microbe refers to a microscopic organism that's too small to see with the human eye and typically includes viruses, bacteria, protozoans, and even some fungi. Already, many of us are intrigued by microbes, as is exemplified by the popularity of movies, TV shows, and books centered around their effects on humans. Uh, World War Z, The Walking Dead, The Andromeda Strain, all examples. There's something fascinating in the macabre of being assailed by an enemy you cannot see that lives around, on, and inside of you. But as we all know, microbes are the villains of these pop culture tales, something to be feared and fought. And this trepidation is not an accident. Humans and animals in general, they typically survive better in the wild when they know what they should fear and act in self-preservation. This is why humans are afraid of spiders and lions, and as you know if you surf the internet, why cats have a fear of cucumbers. <laughs> it's because they think they're snakes. Uh, so, <laughs> in general, in general, fear is something that drives action and has been important in our survival. In fact, humans have altered their behavior significantly, both instinctually and deliberately over the course of our evolution in response to the effects of microbes. Today, I'd like to provide you with information and knowledge to better inform and better understand the importance of microbes in our lives and how better embracing and understanding them gives us the possibility of finding and developing new appreciation and innovations in medical science. If you have a proclivity for nostalgia, you may be able to appreciate microbes in some capacity as the primordial precursors to all life on Earth. And however far removed we are in evolutionary scale now, it cannot be understated that throughout our entire evolution, microbes have been a constant. In antiquity, most of the appreciation of microbes came from the idea that they were killer and dreadful and that we needed to fear them. And as humans transitioned from primarily nomadic lifestyles to building bustling cities and empires, microbes that cause disease, also called pathogens, thrived in their now concentrated host populations. Some of the earliest surviving examples of this include Egyptian art depicting physical malformations typical of polio, mummies that so show scarring from smallpox, and written accounts of raging epidemics in ancient Greece. In fact, throughout history, the severity of plagues has many times been enough to drive evolutionary change of humans through selective pressure. The reaction that we had to these microbes was always important. And the way that our lives are dictated by microbes is intriguing. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the human microbiome, the conglomeration of microbes in, on, and around us, and the importance of this in our everyday lives. In general, researchers have now begun to understand that they can apply the concepts of microbiome, utilizing techniques to understand what microbes are good, bad, and moonlighting somewhere in between. And in general, uh, this gives us a lot of information about ourselves as well. So, uh, on, in any given day, we may come into contact with millions of individual microbes, but yet most of us aren't sneezing the day away. A lot of this is likely due to the psychological and habitual changes that I talked about earlier, um, but most of the strategy was simply to avoid. Uh, but now it's becoming very clear that this is probably not feasible. Uh, that's the first reason that this won't work, it's not feasible, we can't simply avoid all microbes. Other than very expensive and controlled experiments, it's impossible. Second, we now know that immune responses are dictated by colonization with microbes and that they're essential for our proper immune development. And additionally, and perhaps most importantly, that avoidance of microbes may be deleterious to our health rather than helping. In fact, this is termed the hygiene hypothesis, which postulates that removing and ridding ourselves and our environment of microbes may actually lead to improper development of the immune response. The rise in the incidence of allergic and autoimmune diseases like Crohn's, diabetes, and multiple sclerosis in the modern era points to the fact that possibly, uh, possibly 
Cleanliness is far from godliness. Understanding our missteps and how to ameliorate them has utility, but most of the power of microbiology comes from the ability of, of us to harness the power of microbes for our own betterment. Vaccines are a prime example. By developing and understanding methods to better understand how microbes are sensed by our immune system, humans have been able to inoculate with pieces or reconversions of microbes to confer immunity. The conglomeration of the microbes, the microbiome, provides a huge amount of genetic material for us to work with that gives us an ability to interact with the environment around us. The conglomeration of all this genetic material along with the microbes is termed the hum human metagenome, and it's vast, as one component, bacteria, are actually present in numbers that are relatively similar to the number of cells in the human body. Harnessing the power of the metagenome is integral to moving forward in the course of evolution. And the power of the metagenome gives us the ability to interact with our environment in interesting and new ways. So uh, all of this talk about how we interact with our environment and how microbes benefit our health and may actually be important for us to uh, encourage in our lives brings up the point of the interconnectedness of us with all of life and all of microbes and what makes us human. If we're so reliant and connected with microbes, what is it that makes us human? Some of us may argue that it's rooted in our intellect or our ability to recognize self, or our ability to show empathy to others. But these are more accurately what defines us as human. So what makes us human? What is it that constructs the core of our composition of being? If you haven't guessed, the answer I prefer is that it's our genome. Housed within our genome are tens of thousands of genes, the functional units that make all biological processes possible. And unfortunately, our genes are not the only way that we can distinguish because we actually share 96 to 99% of our sequence identity with chimpanzees. So this is not enough to explain the distinction. So, so what is it? The answer appears from all the scientific evidence that we have at the moment to be the way that genes are regulated. And not only how they're regulated, but when they're expressed, how much of them are expressed, and in what contexts. Upon sequencing of the human genome, scientists discovered that only 2% of our genome actually codes for genes, and 42% of it encodes viral elements. It's actually become clear that throughout our evolutionary history, viruses have inserted themselves into our genomes and now not only contribute active viral genes, but also regulate how human genes are expressed. They also provide plasticity in our genome, allowing for replication, duplication, rearrangement, and also acquisition of genes from the environment. In fact, it appears that viruses, more than any other genetic entity, have been critical in delineating humans from other forms of life. Just to reiterate, viruses, those entities about which many of us have nightmares, have been crucial and vital in making humans human. Other microbes are also important, as 99% of our metagenome is composed of the microbial component. And one of the best examples of this is one that you'll probably all recognize, mitochondria. You'll probably recognize it because you heard about it in middle school biology class, and it's the powerhouse of the cell. There's a lot of accumulating scientific evidence that points to the fact that mitochondria were originally free-living bacteria that achieved homeostasis within our cells, and then eventually were passed on from generation to generation. And now, we identify these formerly bacterial brethren as part of our humanness. This, like many of the other topics I mentioned earlier, all kind of brings to a head the idea that microbes dictate our humanness to a high level. But humans aren't the only part of this discussion, because the microbial world is just that, the world around us. Microbes are laced into just about every niche of the environment imaginable, and they dictate how other organisms survive on this planet as well. Treating microbes with care and interest is integral to a vast array of fields like agriculture, climate, and environmental issues. 
when soil is depleted of integral members of the plant microbiome, crops can no longer grow. When microbes at the bottom of the food chain in the ocean are depleted, fish die in droves and whales wash up on shore. All these facts should give cause to humans to look more externally at how we can better facilitate and promote the bacterial, microbial, viral, whatever you'd like to say, community that lives around us. And without this more expansive view, we may make serious and debilitating mistakes in the way that we treat our Earth that could be irreparable. So what should you take away from all of this? Well, first, I hope that you might be interested to learn more about microbes and their role in our lives, and that any fear you had has now been abated or at least tinged with a newfound intrigue. And I would like to think that all of us can appreciate the power of microbes in our world and in our lives, and the power of microbes in the evolution of humans as a whole. And that being said, I hope that you might embrace microbiology moving into the future as not frightening, but enlightening. Now, more than ever, we have the tools at our hands necessary to harness the power of microbes, to discover new treatments, to fix our previous pitfalls, and to save more lives and not just those of humans. Just think what lies ahead of us as we learn more about microbes, and therefore, ourselves. <laughs>